Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to share with you some improvements I've made to my dust collection system and specifically the blast gates. Now, these are Nordfab gates. I've had several other brands in the past and it doesn't matter what brand you've got, they all suffer from the same basic design deficiencies. And I'm going to address some of those in this video with materials I have on hand in my shop and I'm going to share with you the amazing results at the end of this video by some testing. So let's get to the design deficiencies first. Okay, the problems with these blast gates, and I don't care what brand it is, is the gates will always rattle. There's just an incredible gap in here, and they don't, it's, it's just an air in leakage path and it causes the gates to rattle and not seal properly either from allowing outside air in or even leakage past the gate and I'm going to address that I'm going to show you how I did that uh, one of the things I was observing was first these gates were not very smooth now this gates already been modified I'm going to take it apart and show you what I did but these gates, gates have a lot of wobble and where these um, corners are, it just makes the gate not very smooth to operate. The gates rattle and during operation and shutdown, sometimes I'd get enough leakage past these gates to get, it, it was like the worst untuned tuning fork ever made and it was just continuous. It's annoying as all get out. So I'm ad I've addressed that in this performance of this. And another thing I want to get rid of was these stupid annoying thumb screws. Uh, I've got gates that are inaccessible and they, it just wasn't feasible to use it. So I'm getting rid of those. Actually I've already gotten rid of them. So first thing I want to do is disassemble this gate and I'll show you the internals. Okay, now that the blast gate is disassembled, I'm going to talk about the modifications and upgrades I did. The first was to the gate itself. And what I did was I put some uh, 10 mil thick ultra high molecular weight tape on both edges. And the purpose of that was to make it uh, glide smoothly because I was going to put rubber on the inside to try to seal that. But also these gates, if they, if they tilt, the, the sharp steel corners kind of gouge into the aluminum. So what I used with that was this uh, material from, I purchased this from CS Hyde Company and it's a half inch uh, 10 mil ultra high molecular weight tape with rubber adhesive and uh, this is product 19-10R if you're interested I'll provide a link to that in the description okay to seal the the gap between the gate this varied from gate to gate uh, because and it solely depends on the gap, how much clearance and rattle you have between that gate and the, and the uh, blast gate body. What I used here was the loop portion of Velcro and I purchased this at Lowe's. Uh, I'm sure you could get it a number of other places but uh, this was uh, four foot long by two inch. Comes in very useful uh, but that was helpful on that on this uh, to seal that gap and it minimized the airflow if your gap and these the gap I had on this was somewhere between four and five millimeters two uh, strips of the loop portion of the velcro uh, it sealed that nicely provides for smooth operation depending upon the gap you have you may have to play around with this on one of the one of the gates, I had to use this uh, felt, self adhesive felt. I don't expect this to hold up well. I purchased this at Hobby Lobby, uh, and uh, it's like a dollar a sheet, so or less, depending upon the sales. Sometimes I went to the ultra high molecular weight tape if the gap was real narrow, and you can stack these tapes on top of each other. 
For the rest of the seal to provide minimal leakage around the, the gate when it's closed, I use this uh, roll. I use this uh, tape for vacuum. It's a closed cell rubber with uh, adhesive on one side. I purchased this roll. This is uh, 3 8 wide by 16th inch thick. Uh, I've got some 8th inch thick, but it's much too thick for, for this use. Uh, but I, I use that to put adhere to both sides uh, of the gate. And on some of the gates, if the gap was too, uh, too thin or too narrow for this uh, to use the rubber, because you, know, you need to check the operation, just play around with what you've got. On some of the gates, I actually had to use this, uh, this ultra molecular weight tape. And then once that was installed, I just trimmed around the uh, edges to where the tape entered the flow stream with a utility knife and obviously I had a little bit of a rip there, but that's okay. It, it seals just fine. So I'll, I'm not associated with anybody. I don't have any affiliate links, uh, but these are the products that I use. So now I'm going to reassemble this gate and I'm not going to bore you with that. Uh, but I'm going to reassemble it and show the operation, see how smooth it is. Okay, once you've got your gate reassembled, you need to check, make sure, first of all, it's smooth operation. Uh, you don't want to have to have be fighting this thing. So, And I, this one was pretty successful because there is absolutely no gate rattle in this like there was before. And you can see the, see the gap, and this is pretty much centered. Another check is uh, angle the gate to one side, tilt it and make sure it still goes in smoothly and closes fully. So I'm going to put this back in the system and let's get to some test results. Okay, I'm at the dust collector now and I'm going to show you how my test is going to go. Uh, this is a Felder uh, RL series. Uh, this particular model is an RL160. And I think all the Felder RLs have a pressure switch on them. And this pressure switch monitors internal pressure to tell you when you need to clean the filters. And basically it's kind of a sensor of low airflow. And what this particular switch does, it will illuminate that, that light as amber if the flow is low. And I'm going to use that as the method for testing um, my blast gate flow. Now, I've got a total of 10 NordFab blast gates. I've modified all of them now. Before I modified them, I could open one 5 inch blast gate completely and this light would not come on. If I had a reducer and neck that down to a 4 inch hose that's 10 foot long, that light would come on with a 5 inch gate open and I would have to partially open another gate to stop that light from illuminating and basically to ensure I had enough flow through my dust collector. I didn't really want it breathing through a straw. So I'm going to use this light to test my dust collection system and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try this with a 5 inch blast gate fully open and we'll see what the light is. If I need to, I'll open a second 5 inch blast gate. And if I need to, I'll partially open or open a third 5 inch blast gate for the initial part of the test. And I'll just put the text in here because, and any voices you hear are mine. You, you may or may not be able to hear them over the uh, dust collector noise. But what I'll do is do that. And then I've got a couple of 6 inch gates. And I'm going to try to open this with one 6 inch blast gate fully open. And in that case, whenever I had a 6 inch gate open in the previous configuration before these modifications, I never had this light come on. So let's just get to the test. And I'll put the text in of what I'm doing. Okay, right now my current configuration is one 5 inch blast gate completely open.
the test results are in. I'm very pleased with the results, just minor upgrades to 10 blast gates. There were seven five inch gates and three six inch gates. And I was shocked at how much air and leakage I had either past or through the blast gate. I, I estimate that I had the equivalent of over one five inch blast gate wide open in leakage. And I'm looking forward to the future results and see if I can improve the dust collection anymore. So if you got any suggestions on improving your dust collection, I'd love to hear them. But I hope this has been helpful to you, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.